hello friends hello viewers welcome back to our youtube channel remember to subscribe like share and leave a comment down below uh, today we are going to see how to use clopwort clopwort is one of the tools developed by FLO for calculating or computing the crop water requirement for calculating the irrigation requirements uh, and it is also used to determine or to develop irrigation schedules how much water are we supposed to apply when are we supposed to apply that water and to uh, what is the frequency or the duration if I apply water, will I apply water in 30 minutes, in 10 minutes, in 1 hour, and so on. So all these things uh, are determined with the help of crop water. So this is a good tool for determining the crop water requirement, the irrigation requirements, and the irrigation schedule, how much water. So, um, so if you don't have the crop water as a tool, you can download it on this website fo you can uh, keep this link i will give it at the end of the video but you can write it or just go to google and write crop what click enter and you go to this uh, crop what land and water food fo.org so if you click on it immediately you go straight to that website where you can easily download the crop what software or tool just when you click here download the crop what immediately you get a zip a file then you can unzip and install crop what this is how we can get the crop what and we have seen how, uh, what is used for now let us go straight if you open it looks like this this is the window of crop what it's it's icon looks like this click on it once you click on it it is opened directly this is how crop what window looks like and if you want to use crop what you or you we also need a excel sheet where you will paste your results or outputs for further calculation and uses and we also need uh, uh, this this paper it is a good paper which can guide you which has more explanations on how to use different uh, or different calculations which are in crop what uh, the explanations are in this paper it is the FAO irrigation drainage paper number 56 on crop evapotranspiration these are guidelines for computing crop water requirements. All the things that we find in a crop water model or tool, they are also in this paper. This is a good paper where you don't understand a, a tool in a crop water. You can immediately come to this paper and it will get you this a good paper. You can download it just in, on Google. It is easily accessible for free. Uh, so let's go straight to crop what but the another important thing if you don't have uh, the climatic data we mean here the rainfall the humidity the temperature so on if you don't have those data uh, also fo has another database which can help you uh, to get data uh, but uh, if you want of course the up updated one or a time series data you can maybe consult your local weather or meteorological station but if you don't have then your station you can use the the ones available by FAO in this climwatt climwatt is just a, a database or a database which has different stations around the world if you want data from your country it's a matter of searching your country here once you fall on it you can immediately immediately uh, display the stations in the, 
that country. For example, if I'm in Gabon, I can display all stations within the selected. These are the stations in white. They indicate stations in Gabon. I can zoom in and zoom out to see better these stations. So if I click on one station, it will be turned into red. You see, this is the station which looks like this. These are different stations located in Gabon. So this is also a good tool if you want some data uh, on climate. This can help you. This is called Climwat. Climwat for Clopwat. So um, this is what I wanted to tell you. So let's go back. Um, let's go back to our Clopwat. I have already opened my Clopwat. It is here. Let me open it again. Uh, this is my clockwork. So let's see now how to use clockwork. So clockwork. If you want to use clockwork, uh, I have shown the its its icon. This is it. If you want to use it, it's a matter of clicking on that icon and start using it. Uh, now you can see we have different tabs here uh, we have a, a small tab where we put uh, these are inputs uh, if you want to put climatic data of course it calculated the crop water requirements irrigation requirements you will need some data on climate you will need the minimum temperature maximum temperature humidity wind speed sunshine uh, and these two columns in yellow, these are butane formulas which immediately calculates the radiation and the reference of transpiration for you after putting this data. So, of course, this is another window for input if you wanted the rainfall data. Here we have uh, input. After putting the input, the crop part immediately calculates for you the effective rainfall the same you can put the type of crop you want to grow here you have the planting date meter tree the harvesting date is calculated for you you have the crop coefficients you can put them or if you have your local uh, agronomy station you can get this data from your station or you can use the one provided by by FL you have the stages you know the crop when it is growing it goes through different stages and so on so you have a, a way you to put the type of soil you are growing your crop in you on which type of soil the type of soil you can put it here as well after putting the climatic data the rainfall data the crop type characteristics the soil type immediately these are this is the output the if you click here on CWR, you get the crop water requirement and the irrigation requirement depending on the input provided. Here we also have other tabs, but for this video, we will only uh, stop here. We will make a, a second video on these uh, three remaining tabs. So, uh, now let's start. Before starting uh, on how to use the crop pot, uh, let me remind you that we also have other uh, options here. We have when you click on fire, you can just uh, create a new session or open uh, a session. I assume that you have maybe created a, a project on crop pot. You can open it here or you can save a, a session. Uh, you can save us and so on yeah you can edit you can do some calculation the charts settings and so on and you can change the language if you want help here we also have uh, helping topics if you want uh, some more helping topics if you don't understand something you can come here you have an introduction assume that you you want to know what is the crop water requirements uh, or you want to know how to calculate it, it using a clockwork here we have some simple 
uh, ways just to know it if you want to know the pen mounted or how to calculate the difference of vapor transpiration the formulas like the pen mounted approach this is the formula there are so many explanations here if you go on this help tool um so assume that you don't we are starting now assume that we we want to start in uh this session but we don't have maybe the, the climatic data so there are different ways of getting the data to be used in a crop word one of the way is just uh, getting the data from your local weather station or local meteor station after getting the data assume that maybe i'm getting the data from uh, rwanda i'm getting data from rwanda at a given altitude let's say this at a given latitude let's say maybe this something like this south maybe that's an example maybe this is an example station maybe let's call it kigari maybe i have the data i have the minimum temperature minimum temperature the monthly minimum temperature so assume that maybe here i have 12 here i have uh, 10 here i have maybe 15 and the maximum here i have 22 here i have uh, 15 here i have maybe 22 or 25 so i'm typing if you want you can paste you have your data you can paste me that right here i have maybe my humidity as a 50 maybe here i have 70 maybe here i have 12 and so in the wind speed i have this data i have maybe wind speed of uh, maybe 16 18 10 and so on after filling all this data the average automatically is calculated here uh, in this window after filling everything after filling here i'm putting maybe it's 12 maybe 2 maybe 10 after putting everything here automatically the crop what calculates the radiation and the reference of a transpiration for you after filling this uh, table as well you can fill the rainfall as well you can fill maybe 100 maybe 20 you see that the effective rainfall is calculated immediately this is one of the way of getting a, a, or a putting the data, filling the data in a crop word. There's another way that you can use is also using clean word database. So these are different ways of putting, inserting data in crop word. So because we don't have uh, climatic data, we don't have a temperature, we don't have humidity and so on and rainfall. So let's first of all extract some uh, data. Uh, let's uh, use uh, one uh, selected station from Gabon. Let's select Gabon and display its stations. Uh, let's maybe select one of the station. Let's select this one. Uh huh. It is called. Last or view and let's export its data so that we can use them in our tutorial. Export selected station, the Gabon. Gabon, Gabon, last, 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 and create that uh, sub folder and export this data. Data are now exported and they are saved. We see how where they are saved in the local disk C. 
Now we can go back to our claw pot, open it and uh, continue with uh, our calculations. So we have a window of, of data in the claw pot. We can now bring our data. Uh, it's a matter of opening data. So let's go to where we have saved the data. It is in C program files times 86 clean what for clock what Gabon last Saville. that's where the data are saved open once you open you see that now I have my data if I want I can maybe edit here it is Gabon these are the data from Gabon uh, the data from Gabon the altitude is this and the latitude is this south the station is got this longitude is this east so you see now we have the data we are retrieving from uh, climat we have our, our minimum temperature from january to december we have maximum temperature in each month we have uh, humidity in percentage we have the wind speed in kilometer per day we have some shade hours uh, and the, these are calculated the automatically by by clock what once you fill the, all this data immediately a uh, robot calculates for you the radiation and et zero which is the reference evapotranspiration and you know uh, to get the crop water requirement we take the reference evapotranspiration times the crop coefficient if you don't know how it is calculated you can refer to this manual this paper I have been telling you. This paper provides everything. If you go on page 50, you will, you will see that we have our formula for calculating the reference evapotranspiration. And the reference evapotranspiration is helpful if you want to calculate uh, the crop water requirement. Because the crop water requirement, we take the uh, the crop water requirement or the evapotranspiration we take the crop coefficient times the reference evapotranspiration this is important these are the formulas that crop what uses in the calculation of the crop water requirement and if you want you can uh, go to setting and the option and change some units of this uh, uh, this uh, terminology you can go to options and change the the formula for calculate the pen the reference of evapotranspiration you can uh, go to humidity if you want to calculate the humidity you can uh, express the humidity in a percentage or in a kilopascal as uh, just a uh, vapor pressure if you want it yeah after clicking it you will see that it will be turned into KPA, yes, you see. Uh, so going back, let's keep our unit to as any percentage. Um, if you want, you can uh, also change other units. If you want, you can change the temperature and you put the average temperatures or put uh, whatever you have. Uh, let's change. Um, if you want you can also put uh, change the unity of wind speed this is given kilometer per day but you can change it to meter per second or assume that you have uh, your data in meter per second you can uh, first of all come to option and change this unit so now it is changed if you want you can also change uh, whatever you want and assume that you want to see the Reference of transpiration in the millimeter per period per month instead of per day, so you can change to your wish or needs. Um, the same, you can come immediately here to option and change whatever you want. You can change the sunshine to percentage of day length or fraction of day length, and so on but because our data 
uh well maybe in our hours let's keep our sunshine so this is how we can change some of the data units so let's go in the rainfall let's put now the data of rainfall the rainfall uh, we have already downloaded one station from Gabon when we download the data from uh, Climwat those data they come in this type they are they they are they indicate minimum maximum temperature humidity wind speed sunshine and rainfall so when, wherever you download data from Climwat make sure that you all you have all these parameters let's now open the climatic data but uh, specifically the rainfall data let's go to open go to the same folder it was in here climate for crop what gabon last ville when once we open we now have our data and the wherever we put data in white this white column indicates the data from the weather station or the climatic or the meteor station they are put here if you want you can even change here whatever to your wish and the the effective rainfall is that part of rainfall which is absorbed by or which will be used effectively by the plants you know when it rains a part is evaporated another part is turned into runoff and the, a portion which is infiltrated and it will be used effectively by the plants during its growth is the one called effective rainfall so you can now here it is indicated the method we are using in the estimation of effective rainfall if you want you can change the method you are using here we were using USDA uh, United States Department of Agriculture methods if you want and this method assume like this the effective precipitation uh, when the rainfall was less than 200 or equal to 250 millimeter it takes uh, this number uh, this formula this is how it is computed the effective rainfall it if it is higher than 250 it is computed like this if you want you can maybe do the percentage you can say maybe uh, my effective rainfall will be 70 percent of the real rainfall maybe make 70 once i click ok you will see that things will be changing and the method here will be changing you see Changing, but uh, we want to keep our USDA. There are also other methods dependent boring for if you click OK, it will change. Uh, we have a different method. If you you are you want to assume that uh, there is no rainfall, you can do this like this to not be considered mm -hmm. your rain rainfall. But let's keep the USDA like this. Now we have our climatic data are now in our crop what are now in our crop what if you want you can save this data or this session let's save this session maybe let's keep it as a trial or tutorial 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 one and save it uh, now my session is saved as tutorial one so now if you want you can even save your data the rainfall data if you want you can save them or keep like this now let's put the data on crop so the data on crop assume that maybe i'm growing tomato so when you install wherever you install your crop what it comes with some data which were uh, were used uh, in different areas of the world you can maybe adjust or fill your own maybe if you have uh, your local variety you can fill it maybe you have a tomato every tomato as a crop name you know the planting date maybe it is the first uh, March 
and uh, you can fill the crop coefficients if you have them initial stage what is the length for the initial stage the development stage the mid season the late season and you will get the total growing season you can uh, just put the rooting uh, at the beginning what is the root depth and the toward the end what is the root depth length in the meter you can put the critical depression here the yield response data and the crop height and you are done with the crop data but because we don't have because we don't have we can open the one the existing one in the crop what by going going here media tree when you you go to open media tree you have your crops provided by crop what you can assume that maybe i'm growing tomato we have here tomato tomato this is the tomato we have already the tomato which comes with a crop what you can adjust the data according to your local variety maybe assume that maybe your tomato is not grown in 165 days you can adjust according to your local information or local agronomy station um, and you can after adjusting you can also change maybe the planting that maybe t we have planted in maybe in July maybe 10th July after changing here immediately here to the there will be changes so it means that if you plant your tomato on 10th of uh, July you will harvest on 21st December and so on once you are done with the crop data you can now go to soil what kind of soil are you using in growing your tomato so you can put the name of the soil if it is cray put this data if you have the, the data uh, on total available soil moisture what is the water between the field capacity and the wetting point this difference you can put it in a millimeter per meter per depth of per height uh, the height or the depth of that uh, column how many millimeters do you have of water between the feed capacity and the wetting point you can put the maximum rainfall infiltration rate of your soil millimeter per day if you have that information you can put the maximum rooting depth in centimeter you can put uh, the initial soil moisture depression um, as a percentage of total available moisture you can put it here you can put initial if you have those these information you can put them but um, for me i'll use the one provided a fl after installation of this assume that i have this data i'm growing uh, in a sand or i can change it to another maybe assume that maybe i'm growing it in a, a heavy clay soil and the the total variable soil moisture between the feed capacity and waiting point is 200 we have the infiltration rate of 40 millimeter per day with the maximum rooting depth of this and so on so after putting the data on soil what is next it means that we have put all the required data we have the climate we are growing our tomato in this climate we are growing uh, a crop called tomato the information is here the soil is provided now let us see the crop water requirement and the irrigation requirement it's a matter of clicking here media three you get the results so this is one of the use of crop water we have said that the crop water is used for calculating the crop water requirement these are the crop water requirement to calculate the irrigation requirement and so on so now we have our outputs after putting the climatic data putting the crop type and its information characteristics the soil type now we have our first results we it is clear that after planting our tomato on 10th of july it will be harvested on 21st December uh, during that period 
we have seen that the total growing period is 165 days uh, and now we have everything here uh, what is the interpretation here it is clear that the uh, uh, the plant was planted on 10th July we are here we are in July if you remember uh, these are decades decades is like uh, 10 10 days 10 days 10 days so it means that uh, in the first 10 days it means in the uh, we can take maybe a calendar assume that we are in uh, July if we are planting maybe our our tomato on 10th what does it mean this is the first we can call it maybe the first decade this is one decade one decade no the first decade starts from first to 10th these are the first 10 days is uh, this is decade one this is what is this one is representing it, it is representing the first 10 days of july the second decade represents from here up to 10 days one two three four five six seven eight nine ten up to 20. this is the second decade in a july and the third decade start from one two and so on these are the one uh, these are the 10 days which represent the third decade of july and so on you see that we have three decades in each month it means 10 consecutive days uh, august 10 consecutive days three decades three decades three decades three decades in November three decades in December so after indicating the decades now in each decade we are we have a law indicating its data so meaning that the initial stage of the tomato will take like a four decades we take the whole July and the the first decade of August the, the development stage of our tomato will start from second decade of August up to the third decade of September and the mid-season stage of our tomato will start from the first decade of October up to the second decade of November and the late season when the tomato will be ready for harvesting at the maturity stage the red stage will start from the third decade of november up to the third decade of december these are various stages that my plant or my tomato will go through now we have our crop coefficients you see the crop coefficients remember that they are here this we are starting with 0 0.6 we are starting with 0 0.6 for the initial stage the initial stage has 0 0.6 but uh, within the within the development stage the crop coefficients we can do maybe the interpolation between this number and this number there are different values that's why you see within the development we have different values which are between 0 0.6 and the 1.15 they are here and the mid season the mid season has nearly this number it is changing but it is close to 1.15 and the late season it varies between this number and this you see that's it these are the crop coefficient and remember the crop coefficients are important because they are the one which are multiplied by the evapotranspiration the reference evapotranspiration which is this 
once they are multiplied by the, evap the reference evapotranspiration you can easily get the ET or the evapotranspiration which is expressed as the crop water requirement so what does this column in indicate now it is indicating the evapotranspiration in a millimeter per day in each decade of the month it means that in the first decade of July the required crop water uh, requirement is 1.61 millimeter per day in the second decade of July tomato will require 1.57 millimeter per day and so on in December in the first decade it means that tomato will require 2.85 millimeter per day this, these are the evapotranspiration in millimeter per day or the crop water requirement in millimeter per day in each decade. Uh, you remember that to get the ET or the evapotranspiration, it's a matter of taking the crop coefficients times the reference evapotranspiration. These are the manual I have show, shown. Uh, if you want more clarification or explanation, you can read it. So, to better understand how things were calculated, you can maybe take this table, you can copy it with its header, paste it, paste it here, you can paste it, you can paste it here, let's make it blue and go to the other window which indicates the ET and the irrigation requirement copy it paste it paste it here let's make it yellow uh, now let, we are wondering ourselves how where did this value come from and uh, sorry this value etc in millimeter per day we were saying that to get them you take you take the crop coefficient assume that you are taking 0 0.61 0 0.6 we are in july so in july what was the et0 the reference of evapotranspiration the difference of transpiration is 2.61 if we take 2.61 of july which is this times the this uh, crop coefficient 0 0.6 we get something closer if we round we get something closer to 1.6 which is this and the uh, let's maybe try another one uh, let's see where did, did they get this uh, value maybe let's check this this one this is the uh, evapotranspiration in millimeter per day in the second decade of November it, which means we take its corresponding coefficient which is 0. Point, which is 0. Point, uh, uh, no, which is 1.08 times the reference of evapotranspiration of November. In November, the reference of evapotranspiration is this one. So now, if we take the reference of evapotranspiration of November, 3.22 times the crop coefficient in November, 1.08 we get something closer to this which is 3.47 which is this so now we can see how we can get the uh, evapotranspiration or the crop crop water requirement in millimeter per day now to get the evapotranspiration in millimeter per decade per decade it's a matter of time uh, multiplying the number of days in that decade meaning that if to get it in a millimeter per decade it's a matter of taking this value times 10 
if we multiply by 10 we get 1.6 if we multiply this we might get this times 10 times 10 to get just a, a millimeter per decade times 10 but uh, here why is it changing why is it not getting uh, because in the third in the third decade of august how many days are in the third decade of august let's see the, the third decade of august does not have the 10 days the first decade it ends here the second decade of august these are it starts from here the three four five six seven eight nine ten it ends here the fourth, uh, the this was the third, right? This is the this was the second decade of uh, August. The third has three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven days. Eleven days. That's why we are having somehow a higher value. So if we take this per day one if we take this 1.98 times maybe 11 we get something closer to this 21.8 which is this so this is where this 21.8 came from they multiplied it by 11 instead of 10 because the third decade of august has more than 10 days they picked all the 11 days and so on. now we have our our crop water requirement per decades our crop water requirement per decades we have our crop water requirement or the evapotranspiration per decade in total we can say that the total crop water requirement of this crop will be when you we make the total we get 443.3 so meaning this is the total this is the total crop this is the total crop water requirement requirement is equal to 3443.3 millimeter millimeters per the whole growing season this is the same as the crop water requirement or the total ET the total evapotranspiration in the whole season this is the water needed by this tomato our tomato we need in millimeter we need the 443.3 millimeter if you want you can express it in cubic meter by multiplying it by the area so assume that maybe we want to get it in, in assume that maybe you are growing your tomato on uh, two hectares so this is the converting factor if you multiply it you can get it means that you will get this amount of water cubic meter we need 8866 cubic meter of water so now we have our total crop water requirement what will be the irrigation requirement before getting the irrigation requirement remember that we have the effective rainfall which comes from this the effect our effective rainfall is distributed into decades if you want you can also express it into decades uh, so we have our growing season between July and uh, December from uh, July to December this is the rain which is distributed in this way totaling at this amount meaning that the irrigation requirement irrigation re requirements is almost the difference between the crop water requirement or the evapotranspiration and the effective rainfall you you remember that the irrigation requirement is that part of water which it will come and supplement uh, 
the rainfall it is raining but uh, the rainfall is not meeting the required evapotranspiration or is not meeting the required crop water requirements in order to meet the evapotranspiration or the crop water requirement that's why we should irrigate it's here they're assuming it's almost zero that's why they are providing uh, they are saying that the almost all the water will come from irrigation that's why this is equal to this and uh, here in the second decade of july we are not receiving rain for at all that's why the irrigation requirement is almost equal to crop water requirement or the evapotranspiration the same to this the difference is this the difference is this the difference and so on when the rainfall is higher than the crop water equipment there, there will be no irrigation that's why it is zero here if you are getting enough rainfall it means that there is no need of irrigation that's why it is zero here we will not irrigate here and, and so on it means that the whole irrigation requirement is 71.9 millimeter in that season meaning that the crop water requirement is this the rainfall will be this and the irrigation will be this so mainly this is how we can calculate the crop water requirement the irrigation requirement and so on these are the steps we go through if we want to calculate it and I have shown you how to copy and paste your data so thank you and uh, keep uh, subscribing to this channel for more videos and remember to get the remaining uh, tabs on the irrigation schedule and the crop pink pattern and the scheme irrigation we may we have another video for this